Hey guys, we're back. It's Ted Bogart with the Ted Show. And look who's finally back after a little hiatus. The one and mm -hmm. only Kendra Davies with Stellar Life Coaching. You have been hello, hello. missed. All your fans missed you. We're very yeah. excited to have you back. Welcome. How's it going? Hi, Hi. thank you. It is going very, very well. You look very amazing. Well. Thank you. I thank mean, you, you don't look a best. day over 20. I will take that, sir. <laughs> yeah. To the bank. All right, 21's, a, you know, 21's good. I was going to say, though, 21, let me have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you're with Stellar Life Coaching. Tell us a little bit about you yeah. before we take a deep dive. I love this topic because I think a lot of people feel trapped in our thoughts and we have no idea how to get out of that terrible yeah. roller coaster yeah. ride or gerbil thing we're on all the time. Uh, but tell them about you first. Sure. So my name is Kendra Davies. I am a positive psychology practitioner and a life coach. I own Stellar Life Coaching here in Orlando, Florida. And uh, I am on the TED show every Tuesday at 3 p.m. sharing fantastic fun facts uh, about positive psychology and how to live your best life and show up authentically in the world. That's what I and do. You do an amazing job. I was telling you before we went live that I had people from all over the world, that is not an exaggeration, uh, of the visualization show that we did. Of course, my yeah. friends who like to give me a hard time said, oh, that's just because you got to close your eyes for a little bit, Ted. Um, <laughs> and they're not wrong. However, mm -hmm. that was so relaxing. And what I wanted people to get from that, which you did flawlessly, is how mm -hmm. you can really get into that and how you can allow yourself. Look, I allowed myself out of... I went from stressful to the show to relaxation, mm -hmm. but I, I'm used to it. So I allowed myself. It's kind of a learned thing. Yeah. But, uh, you do all sorts of amazing things with your clients and for your clients. So kudos yes. to you. Yes. You, you come up with the topic every week. Thank God. Um, <laughs> and I love this topic because I definitely know I feel trapped in my thoughts. Sometimes I get on that crazy hamster wheel. That's what I meant to say earlier. Mm -hmm. And you get in that mode and you can't seem to ex escape. And you're like, God, why can't I think positive? Why can't I get out of this? Why do I think like yeah. this? And so we're always feel, I feel like a lot of people feel that way. So tell us a little bit about the imp impetus behind this particular topic. Because yeah. you yeah. always have something um, that makes you choose a topic. For sure. So I chose this topic because uh, I was frequently having to talk about positive psychology and what it is. And positive psychology has a few uh, people who object, yes. And the idea is that they believe positive psychology is somehow always, you know, rose colored glasses and it's butterflies and rainbows and just think positive thoughts. And um, in truth, positive psychology is actually about learning to bring all of the emotions to the table. Like how do we actually live and feel the full breadth, width, and weight of our lives. And um, the thing that often gets pushed, you know, that people are stout, uh, you know, preaching is like, you control your thoughts and you can think positive and like where, you're, where, your, focus, where your focus goes, you know, that's what grows. All of these things in some ways are true, but I don't believe that that is the whole picture, right? So, we're humans, so we can't actually control our thoughts. You can't. Like, you, if I'd say, don't think about pink elephants, what do you think about? I'm gonna think about pink elephants. Exactly, and do you care about pink elephants? Are pink elephants important to you? Do they have any bearing in your life? The answer is no, but because I said it, <laughs> that's what you're gonna do. Like, the brain does what it does, right? So I picked the topic because it is something that is frequently brought to me as a challenge for folks and getting trapped in our thoughts. And, you know, we've talked some about like the importance of negative and positive emotions and how negative emotions serve us from an evolutionary perspective, right? So when I feel fearful, like my brain files that under like, okay, like don't go here, not safe. And where there's food and community, my brain is like, okay, this is safe, I like this, right? Like, but positive emotions require more effort and um, consistency, right? It's like working out or going to the gym. If you want to build that muscle, you have to work it. 
So when we get trapped by our thoughts, what happens is we get these blinders, right? And then we can only see that thing that we're choosing to look at, right? So you're stressed, you're overwhelmed, all of a sudden, like the blinders come in, our vision gets narrow, we can't think outside of the box, we don't see the solutions, we don't feel relief. Even when we actually try to do the things that we think work, we go for the exercise, we, we try to meditate, et cetera. And so I wanted to bring this up because positive psychology actually has a lot of research and, and suggestions to help us get out of this trap. And that is why I chose the topic. I, I think it's so important. I think I've experienced this very recently. You can ask my family. You get in that mode and it seems like one thing triggers another. And so you mm -hmm. start going down the rabbit hole of negativity. You start going down that yeah. rabbit hole of, um, you know, if the sky wasn't falling, well, now it is because everything else is wrong. And then everything else yeah, gets yeah. Uh, magnified while mm -hmm. you're going through it. And it's this snowball effect. And to pull yourself out of it is very difficult. So give us it some is. tools on some things we can do. I can tell you what I did, which are which was literally roll around in the pity mode for a good <laughs> solid day. That is really yeah. not the answer, I'm sure, but that's what I did. Yeah. Well, and I didn't I know how to get out of it. I didn't know, I didn't have the tools, I felt like. Well, I think we have to remember that we're feeling beings. So when the thoughts get going, thoughts are fueled by that feeling. So, uh, and this is what's very interesting because we wake up and we can wake up sad, right? And then the thoughts become sad. And then you're thinking sad thoughts, you're feeling sad, like sadness gets amplified. And then you pick up your phone and then you're going to notice, even though there are other funny cat videos that, that are usually there, it, you're gonna notice that sad post. It's gonna yes. stand out more. Things will begin to, to happen this way. This is a natural thing that happens. It's, uh, it's not your fault first and foremost, and you're not alone. You're not the only one. You're not some unicorn who just can't seem to get out of the funk, right? When we say that positivity takes effort, it means that I have to be able to honor that I'm in the dark, yeah? That this is sad, that this is heavy. I have to be able to name it, right? And I have to be willing to be in it. And what I find is that when we're trapped in the loop, it is often about resistance. The loop is often, I don't want to think this. I don't want to feel this. I don't want to have to deal with it. I don't want to face the day. I don't want to confront my partner. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to have to go home and figure out what to eat tonight. The resistance, the not wanting to do the thing that is in front of us is usually the actual culprit in the loop. Does that make sense? Right. Yes, it totally makes sense. <laughs> so I think we put, we put things off, right? Like I, that, yeah. that caught, that might well, one of my number one things, and I'm not a procrastinator, but when I get in procrastination mode, mm -hmm. it's almost like it's that snowball again, and I can't seem to turn it off. And so everything, and then I'm stressed out, and then I'm mad, and then mm -hmm. everything's negative. I, I had control in the beginning, and I allowed some things to happen that I shouldn't have, mm -hmm. and then I don't know how to get out of it then. Well, and I think you also have to think of like emotional labor. Like negative emotions are actually harder to carry throughout the day. So you might know that, like you, you use the words, I allowed some things to happen, right? When we, when we are dealing with negative emotions, it takes a lot more energy and effort to just carry them. So our decision-making processes are going to be a little skewed, right? We're gonna choose the cookie over the meditation and the exercise. We're gonna choose to isolate over being around people. Like we're gonna make those choices because the emotional load uses whatever pools of reserve we have in energy and effort for the day, right? Yes. So what must we do? First, you're not alone. You're not crazy. You're not a unicorn. You're, like, you're not deeply, <laughs> deeply flawed. <laughs> you are a human being and you are not alone, first and foremost. Second, honor the darkness. Like you're in the dark. Resisting the dark doesn't help you. Be able to identify and name the thing that you're in. Like, I'm scared. I don't want to have this conversation. You know, uh, uh, whatever the thing is that we're avoiding or resisting. And then choose one thing 
like not to deny the negative, but then choose one piece of light, right? Uh, for me, it is often my son, um, could be my partner, it could be uh, a plan or a trip or something that I have to look forward to that is in the near future, any piece of light that you can focus on. It is not to deny the darkness, it is merely to say that while I'm in the dark, while I feel these things, I can also see the light. I can practice gratitude. I, do you see what I mean? Like, I do. Honor the dark, be in the dark, shit. Roll around in that self-pity for a day. I am mad at you, like take a nap, shit, do it. <laughs> but also, also recognize that positive emotions don't really have an evolutionary purpose other than to tell us that there's no threat. So if you want to get out of the negativity, if you want to get out of the negative mindset, we have to choose a different thought. Like you can't stop your negative thoughts, but you can choose intentionally to think a different thought. So if your thought is they don't like me, you can alternatively choose to say, they don't need to like me. I just have to show up and be myself. Correct. Does that make That's sense? That's hard though, right? Because we, we as humans, I think we, we want to be liked. I'll use that example. Mm -hmm. Or uh, yeah, people thanks. also that before we went live, somebody had this question. I'm glad you were talking. I remembered it. Um, what if you are somebody who just wants to deny all feelings? <laughs> you, know the if, you know the type I I'm would, talking what about. What if I was dead? Hey, That's what guess you just what? Said to I me. know I just got in a car accident <laughs> and I'm mangled, but um, no, that didn't happen to me. Or I'm not going to let that, I'm not going to think about that or talk about it. Is the denying mm -hmm. it or, or uh, positive, or is it just delaying the inevitable? break is how I would describe it. So this is, uh, this is always interesting because you cannot deny the feelings. Like you can deny, uh, you can suppress, right? Yes. But you're still feeling it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like it yes, still has, totally. whether you're talking about it, whether you're processing it, it still has the same energy suck. It still yes. depletes your reserves. It still affects your thinking. It still affects your decisions. It still affects your sleep. It still affects your health. Like the research behind suppressing and, and um, denying emotion. I mean, it's astounding. The inflammation studies from denying emotions, like denying it, all you're doing is just not externally expressing it. But if you can be like, you know, uh, you're going through a breakup and you just don't want to, like, if you're like me, <laughs> I, I, I get mad that I have the feelings. You know what I mean? I'm like, I hate the fact that I'm sad, you know, like, damn it. Yes. I want to be angry and rage and I'm not, I'm sad instead. Right. Or I usually cry at everything. Like I cry when I'm happy. I cry when I'm sad. I cry when I'm angry and I hate that I express my feelings in this particular way. Right. So you, you the, the desire is to suppress it. But I mean, the research is really clear, like that you're not actually denying it. It is no easier for you to live your life denying emotion than feeling the emotion. The other important piece is that you don't get to cherry pick. So when you experience negative emotion, and you decide that you don't want to suppress, you, you want to suppress it or deny it. You also deny and suppress the experience of positive emotions. Like you can't be like, well, I just don't feel negative emotions. Like that's nonsense. If you deny the it negative, then you deny the like you deny the positive. There's, you, there's no they, they kind of go hand in hand. They're in the same part of the brain, right? They're not divided up into filing cabinets where one can get locked and the other one is open. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, that's just not totally. how it works. But we 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 tend to. I feel like our natural is to go for the worst case scenario a lot. Yeah. And yeah. so that also is another type of trap. I have people mm -hmm. um, that back in the day, Peanuts had Pigpen, right? He was the one with the cloud <laughs> hanging over him all the time. Uh -huh. Or Eeyore. I have, mm -hmm. I have people that I know that when I see them, I know the first word out of their mouth is going to be negative. Mm -hmm. And they live with that all the time and then accept that. And I feel like, well, yeah, maybe they're not trapped in their thoughts, but really they are, they're trapped in that negative world. 
How do they begin to get out? Is it journaling? Is it therapy? Is it, um, what's a good step for somebody to begin when they know it? They know, all right, I want to change, Ted. I want to change, Kendra. I don't want to be like this anymore. I don't want to be trapped. Yeah. Yeah. What's some things that they can begin to do? Well, I think uh, first, and first and foremost, foremost like, like get help. Get help. You know, like yeah. if you were learning how to play an instrument or if you were learning how to play a sport and you had no idea how to do it, then you would hire somebody to teach you. And the same thing goes for like learning how to engage your br- the other part of your brain in a meaningful way. If you're, if you're trying to learn how to be more positive or address your thoughts and feelings, then hire a professional to help you actually learn to do those things, first and foremost. You know, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. The, the journaling is always helpful. Like there's, there's these traditional things that are beneficial, but it's also about the intention, right? Yes. So like you can journal and you can write about your day all you want, right? But when we journal with intention, uh, having a, a specific desire, like if you are l- trying to get out of negative thought, right? Focus on the light know the darkness, honor the darkness, be able to name it. I am sad and I'm grateful. I am disappointed and I'm also hopeful for the future. And if you're not there, if you don't see the light yet, be gentle. Like it's okay to not see the light. Sometimes we do need the break. Sometimes we do need to take a nap. Sometimes we need to listen to sad songs and cry for three days. Sometimes that's just what, that is just what we need. And when we allow the emotions to come through, process all the way through, they leave us. Yes. Sometimes they stay for days, sometimes they stay for weeks, sometimes they stay for months. But eventually, when we allow ourselves to actually process and feel these emotions, they will go. You know, the most important uh, aspect of this, sorry, my kid just came home from school. Hi. He, He asked if he could be on again. Jackson, do you want to come say hi to Ted? I love it. So, hi. I see him in the background right. too. I told him, I told him three thirty-five. So he is fifteen minutes early. Hi. Hi, Ted. Hi, buddy. How you doing? He said hi. How are you? Good. Good. How was school? How was school? Good. 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 All right. I love you. Give Good. me your cheeks. Show me, the, show me these cheeks so I can get. Them. I love you. Oh, I love that. So sweet. Have a good day. Enjoy your toy. I love you. Bye, baby. What a sweetheart. Aw, my so sweetest sweet. dude. I, I love know. when they still come home from school like that. I know. I love that. Oh, my man. Your baby. I Always going to be your baby. And now I've, I've completely lost my train of thought. No, that's I, um, I think what the important thing, we're, I mean, we were starting to wrap up anyway, but I want people to know the alone part was so powerful what you said. You're not alone mm-hmm. when you're feeling this. I no, think we feel no. alone like people are going to think less of us if we roll around in our pity for a day or two. People mm-hmm. are going to feel less, think less of us or if we say I'm scared or I'm sad. There's this weird stigma attached to saying that you're feeling anything negative. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think people do stay trapped for a little longer because they don't deal with it because they don't want to talk. They don't get it out. They're not yeah. talking about it. They're not dealing with it. Well, I mean, you can also paint about it and sing about it and dance about it and like whittle wood about it. You know what I'm saying? Like you can go whittle blacksmith, <laughs> blacksmith about it. Like I don't care how you do it. Right. It's, it's learning to actually have an expression. Right. Yeah. Like, When we get out of here and we can move the thoughts into the feelings and into the body, then it becomes energy we can expel. Does that make sense? So you can dance, you can tinker, you can fix things, you can uh, exercise, right? You You can find ways to expel the energy from the body. Um, but one thing, okay, one thing I wanted to say before, when we were talking about getting help and finding somebody to to work with you, right? Like that's not even like a shameless plug for myself, although I am available. Um, what I wanted, <laughs> what what I wanted to say, we were talking about journaling and having intention and being able to actually challenge some of the thoughts, right? Like you and I have talked about limiting beliefs before. Yes. 
when we get stuck in the trap, we have the resistance, but then we have the belief about ourselves that is actually fueling it, right? So uh, I don't wanna have this confrontation with my partner. I feel very heavy, I, I feel insecure, right? And so what I do when I feel this is I start playing the stories and the old tapes about how I am, like how I always do this or how I'm too much or uh, I'm unlovable, I'm unworthy, I'm not, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not funny enough, I'm not smart enough, I, like the old tape starts playing. And then, then I'm in the loop. So when we journal, when we start working with somebody else to help us understand these thoughts and feelings, that is the part that we actually start to uncover. We start to realize things like, how do I contribute to the negative, right? When you actually have somebody who challenges you, you see things like, oh shit, I wake up sad when I get less than six hours of sleep. Like it just happens. Like I can be challenged and questioned. And then all of a sudden I have this insight as to what works best for me. I know some people who can get four hours of sleep and totally function. God bless. If I get, if I get less than six, honey, I am, I'm exhausted. I'm short tempered. Like I can't. I'm I aware, can't. not you, but I get it. I'm, I'm old. Saying. I'm you're old. Not, you're I, the furthest mama, thing from Mama old. needs rest. <laughs> <laughs> we all need our beauty rest, but it's beauty rest. Other, it's, it's mental rest too. Yeah. But I have other clients. Like if they don't work out, that is how they get. They, their thing is physical release. Like when yes. they do not work out, they rely so heavily on that physical exhaustion to work them out that when they don't get it, they get very, very uh, emotional. People like me, I'm the polar opposite of that. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's worse. If I had to work out, I'd be cranky as hell. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> like if I if I can't talk or communicate or if I feel like somebody's withholding, like that is that is my thing. That's my version of not working out. Like I need somebody who can talk to me every day. I need that. <laughs> yes. It well, it's, it feeds your soul. It's it's an outlet, and I think a lot of people don't know how to really utilize their outlets, or yeah, maybe they've never tried. A lot of I, I know people that say, "Well, this is how my mom was. This is how my dad was. This is how all my yeah, brothers and yeah. sisters." I'm like, "Oh my god, the generational stuff. We could have a whole show about that breaking dude, that cycle." Dude. Uh, mm -hmm. But I I feel like people. They, they find every other reason except a solution. So I'm gonna dance around it all, but I'm really mm. not gonna address the problem and hope this works out and it never But works I don't think out. people do that. I don't think people do that on purpose. I genuinely, like in my work with people, when, when I talk and I, and I say, hey, what do you think about this? Could, does that fit? How does this feel? And they're like, oh shit, I do that. You know, is it possible that like, you know, you did this and it brought on this consequence or like having another person challenge you is sometimes the key because you don't see the things, you know what I mean? And if you can't see it, you can't fix it. If you can't see it, you can't change it, right? So I don't know, I don't think that the Eeyores of the world and um, the people who get kind of trapped the most, I don't believe that, you know, I don't believe that for the most part that they're doing it on purpose. I don't think. I don't think they do. You're absolutely right. I don't. I think it is like every other learned okay. behavior. Mm -hmm. it, it's just it becomes your norm, and that is your reaction. That's how you deal with things because that's your way of doing it. I agree. Yeah. But yeah. a lot of people, when you point it out, you know, you have to be in the right space. If they come to you, they're obviously ready to yeah. hear it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you try to just go around telling people all of the ways that they could improve your themselves, you're going to lose a lot of friends. Yeah. Um, so you really have to be in the mindset to go, yeah, I need to change or there's something not right. Can we talk about what's not right? And that's where mm. stellar life coaching and Kendra Davies comes in like that little segue. Um, so tell them how they can reach you. What's the best way to learn more, to engage your services, uh, your book, your workshops, all of that Ooh. good stuff. How can they get to you? So many awesome things are happening. So, so uh, I am I am taking a women's retreat to Bali in August. If you would like to learn more about that, you can go to stellarlifecoaching.com and then click on the Phoenix retreat. Um, the book has been pushed. We have launched uh, in August. So the awesome. book will be out in August, which is very, very exciting. And then we also have Evolve, the online group coaching program. Uh, that I believe is going to be starting in July. So if you yes. are looking, Evolve is uh, really like a 
personal development 101. So you get to work with me, but you also get kind of a group coaching environment. Our topics okay. are going to be like building self-awareness, mindfulness. Um, it's kind of an introduction to positive psychology at the same time. So it's um, that's one of my favorites to lead. So excited for you. All the good stuff Thanks. you put out in the world is all coming back to you, Miss Kendra Davies. All right, Kendra Davies, Stellar Life Coaching. We'll be back next Tuesday. But in the meantime, if you have topics or questions, you can reach out to me or reach out to Kendra. And um, if you want to finally engage that positivity coach, that person who you've been wanting to help, Kendra, Kendra's available, stellarlifecoaching.com. Call me. All right. Love you. Peace. <laughs> Guys, we'll be back tomorrow. Have a great evening, everybody. See you Bye. Bye-bye, everybody.